Well, Democratic Alliance Chief Whip Natasha Mazon says the uh, party will open a case against DFF leader Julius Malema over a social media post reading Magwala Achechele Morahu fighters attack. They say the post incites violence. Malema sent the tweet after a group of farmers tried to storm the Senegal Magistrates Court just over a week ago following the murder of a farm manager. We have the EFF's head of presidency, Sinao Tambo, now via Zoom. Sinao, a very uh, good morning and thank you so much for making the time to speak to us today. Hi, and greetings to your viewers. So the Democratic Alliance says it's taking uh, leaders of the EFF to court, uh, open, going to open a case today. What is the EFF's take on the DA saying it's planning on this move? Well, we view the, view the move by the Democratic Alliance as a pathetic attempt of worming their way back into the hearts of racists. So it's a frivolous attempt and a waste of time of law enforcement in this country which could, which, an effort which could be better spent fighting gender-based violence and fighting crime uh, that is pervasive in the township of this country. We're all aware that the Democratic Alliance is undergoing a purge of black people in order to reconstitute itself within the white supremacist constituents in this country, which has currently been overtaken by the likes of FF Plus and Yupita Hunevalds and Apifora. So the Democratic Alliance, which constantly tiptoes around racism in this country and fighting racism in this country, is just currently trying to flirt with right-wingers by making a frivolous case against the EFF, which does not exist. The EFF and the commander-in-chief has not incited any. To say Magwala Acheche, meaning cowards go to the back, does not constitute violence. We are saying those who are not willing to defend state property, those who are not willing to defend the rule of law, those who are not willing to defend the judiciary of this country, from people who cowards. So the EFF is going to be at the forefront of defending state property and, of course, the courts of this country on Friday at Senegal Court. And that is all it is. It's not an incitement of violence. If anything, it's a call to defend democracy. What's, what's the EFF's next move after the case has been opened? I don't think there's a case uh, to, be, to be followed, uh, per se. We'll uh, await someone from a court or being charged by a sheriff and we'll see how far that goes. But in our view, there's no case. It's simply a publicity stand by the Democratic Alliance. And of course, it's very hypocritical as well, because it was the very same leader of the DA currently, John Steinhaz, who encouraged one Ernst Roots, who posted himself practicing shooting uh, on Twitter. And he said, congratulations, or well done, or something along those lines. It was Peter Grunewald in Parliament who threatened war should the government proceed with the legislative process of expropriation of land without compensation. So there's a hypocrisy of, in this country of who can declare war, who has a legitimacy over violence, and who can actually say that they're going to defend their rights or their well-beings. And this is never called out. Why has the Democratic Alliance not pursued a case against those who are causing chaos at Senegal court? So these are, this is a hypocrisy that is pervasive in South African society. Those with a white skin seem to be able to operate with impunity, while black people are constantly condemned, met with violence once they fight for their rights. We can see, with, we can see it with how the farmers at Senegal are characterized. They are called aggrieved farmers who are protesting for a justifiable cause. This was not done for Marikana workers. This was not done for FISMA as well activists. So the, if, so the EFM is not going to stand by and allow her to defend uh, the court at Senegal on Friday. And we're not going to be deterred by frivolous and useless cases uh, done by people who are trying to flirt with right-wingers in this country, in the likes of the DA. Our line is not very reliable, and we apologize about that. But uh, you're talking about people uh, operating with impunity. And just earlier on, we were speaking to uh, Professor Adam Habib, uh, just in terms of analysis about this development. And he was saying the EFF is acting with impunity, uh, and it's irresponsible in, in, in its acts and not providing good leadership. What have you got to say to that? We don't take the likes of Adam Habib and his analysis seriously in this country any longer. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's very well known for his selective outrage against the EFF. It took him about two days to speak out about the chaos that occurred at Seneca. So we are well aware that he has a very misconceptualized uh, understanding of many concepts in this country, many concepts in political sciences, which astound us as to how he's the leader of a, of a university in this country, and we're glad that he's leaving. He calls us fascists, you know, the EFF uh, practices democratic elections within its ranks, and is a, is a member of parliament. He calls us violent, yet we've been protesting, peacefully fighting racism, yet he'll be very slow in condemning uh, 
crimes and hooliganism committed by white people in this country. And of course, he's a, he's a vice chancellor who's been at the height and at the seat of committing violence against student activists as well. So we're not shocked about Adam Habib's analysis. It's consistent with his, it's consistent with his political views. It's consistent with what he's always stood for as a liberal, as someone who doesn't really like to take a firm stance on any issue in this country. So Adam Habib's analysis doesn't faze us. We're going to continue regardless. So just remind us about uh, the stance of the EFF with regards to developments in Senegal. So as the EFF, we've noted what we blatantly describe as cowardice from the South African police services. Uh, vehicles were burnt. Uh, a court of law was stormed by people who wanted to take the law into their own hands and take suspects into their own custody to do only God knows what with them. Of course, this is a hypocrisy the EFF is noting. I mean, thousands of black people die every day in South African townships, but you'll never see uh, black people storming courts of laws and demanding suspects to be handed over to them. And this is just basically the, 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 the pain of being black in this country in terms of how white people seem to think that a crime against them constitutes a national disaster. It's wrong, and uh, the EFF is going to intervene on that. We're going to be at Senegal court on Friday, the 16th, and we're going to be demonstrating as well, saying that there must be consistency from the law, there must be consistency from law enforcement. It must never be allowed that people can uh, do as they wish to the courts of law of this country. It is a threat to the very constitutional fabric of South Africa. I mean, it's reminiscent of the Avia led by Jinta Blanche in 1993, pre the dawn of democracy, storming the World Trade Center. And I think the EFF is not going to allow that. So we will be at Senegal court uh, protesting peacefully, defending property. And uh, those who push us will be pushed back. It's as simple as that. We are willing to do any means necessary to defend a constitutional democracy, and we're not going to allow right wingers to operate with such impunity. Okay. Um, on to other matters. Let me ask you, we've just received news that Cabinet has given the green light to the uh, uh, Land Restitution uh, uh, Act. Uh, gosh, I've, I've missed the words now, but it's the Land Expropriation Bill um, that's going to Parliament. Uh, this is quite a a heated conversation, especially amongst uh, inside the EFF. Are you, are you, how are you responding to this development? Take a look at the act and, or the bill per se. But of course, uh, we are thankful that the process that has been initiated by the economic freedom fighters, and of course our first cardinal pillar, which is land expropriation without compensation, is gaining public expression, especially within legislative corridors in this country. Of course, we have different characterizations of how this land restitution process ought to occur. For example, we believe that all land must be transferred to state custodianship in order for it to be equitably redistributed to people of this country. So there are those nitty gritties that we're going to have to look into in terms of functionality. And of course, to ensure that the process of land expropriation without compensation is not hamstrung uh, by the courts in terms of people having to make constant appeals to the court, being denied and long drawn out processes. And of course, ensuring that the willing buyer, willing seller clause in itself is completely removed from any legislative documents in this country. So we welcome, of course, the ventilation of the ideas of the EFF. Of course, we continue to lead in terms of ideas. We continue to lead in terms of superior logic and legislation. And this is just another representation of that. So we're going to deal with the nitty gritties of the bill as it uh, presents itself to Parliament. So I imagine we'll be speaking again about this in time. Thank you so much for making the time this morning. No, thank you. Sinao Tambo is uh, with the EFF. He's the head of presidency at EFF.